Hey guys, and welcome to today's video where today I'm going to go through all the things I have for my arboreal bioactive tank build. So if you're wondering what equipment to use, what decoration to use, what tank to use, stay tuned because I'm going to go through it all. Um, so take some notes if you will, but I will try to link some things below. If you didn't know, this tank is for my Chihua Drogo. So a Chihua, also known as a mossy prehensile tailed gecko, is from New Caledonia. If you've heard of crested geckos, gargoyle geckos, lychees, they're from the same place. So we're going to have like sort of a similar setup, but this time we're going bigger. So the first thing we'll look at is the tank itself. I have a 60 by 45 by 60 centimeter Haberstat terrarium. Now, these are fairly new on the market and I've been using one for a while now with my African fruit beetles and I've been seeing them in pet shops everywhere and they always look really, really cool. So Haberstat were really kind to send me one for Drogo. Now this was very simple to set up. It comes flat packed so you just need to pop it together and even me, someone who takes a while to put stuff together, it really wasn't a challenge. You can also slide out these side pieces so if you think your animal needs more ventilation you can just pop them in. So this is extremely reflective but I thought I'd just show you the door handles and the lock so you just stick these on and that's the handles and then when the doors are closed can't do this with one hand it's very difficult to film and do this but basically the lock pushes that up it's going to take a little bit of getting used to but it's a very simple mechanism there obviously the roof is now screwed in place so to pop off the actual like lid if you had to I'm assuming, oh yeah you do this um one downside i'd say about this is there isn't any room for um, your leads to go in, unless I guess you use this. You could use that, I guess. But what I do end up doing normally, because I build out that background anyway, is I do just make a hole in the mesh to get whatever, you know, leads I have to to get through. So it's not a big deal, because usually when I build these tanks, it gets blocked up anyway, but that's just something to know. Also, as you can probably tell, the mesh is black. Now, I have mentioned this in a previous video, but black mesh does absorb a lot and so if you are going to use this with a reptile you'll either have to replace the mesh if you really want to or you're going to have to get a uv lamp that's a little bit higher so by the time it reaches your reptile it's a right uv index so i am going for the pro t5 seven percent with drogo so this is a Pro T5. If you watch me for my leopard gecko content, you know this is what I use with all my leopard geckos. But also if you're setting up a tank like me and you have that black mesh, then this could be really good for a Chihua. Um, also, obviously a really important thing is to provide different ledges, different heights, so the gecko can choose to move closer or further away or hide completely from the UV. Obviously plants will help that, but if you provide hides as well, that's even better. And I feel like this is easy to regulate in an arboreal tank when you're building your own background because you can provide all those different ledges so your gecko can choose. The next bit of tech we're using is the Jungle Dawn LED bar. This is a 34 watt one. So this is a little bit larger than what I have with my Crested Gecko tank at the moment. So it'd be interesting to see how well the plants grow with this slightly stronger one. But I've been using the Jungle Dawn for years. I do prefer the LED bars now because you can link them all up. So Lyra, my crested gecko, has an LED bar and a UV, so I'll be able to link those two together, as well as this LED and that Pro T5, and so all four lights are controlled by one plug, one timer, so that is awesome. The next bit of tech is heating, so of course I'm going with the deep heat protector. I, I use these a lot, absolutely love them. Lyra, my crested gecko, has always had one, incredibly helpful in the winter as well a lot of these animals are just sort of under energized they don't get enough heat as they need and you know it has to be said yeah crested geckos and chihuahuas don't need as much heat as say a leopard gecko but this can make such a difference although i will admit you know it is quite an investment so if you're pretty happy with what you're doing then you might not want to pay this but you, definitely in autumn and winter I see a massive difference in my geckos and I do see my crested gecko actually lay under it sometimes. 
Now, of course, if you're buying a deep heat projector, remember you need a fitting. Um, so I am using the clamp lamp and this is a clamp lamp graphite. So it is that darker color. And I actually use it on Gizmo's tank as well. I don't know if it's something about the color. It just fits in with this whole room. I like it, but yeah, remember the fitting when you get a deep heat projector. And of course, remember your thermostat. It's incredibly important. It's the thing that sets the temperature. And without this, that deep heat projector can get very hot. And for a gecko like a Chihua who is quite temperature sensitive, you really don't want it overheating. The last bit of tech I have here is a Haberstadt humidifier. I think this is fairly new. I haven't seen it before. The last humidifier I had was quite simple, whereas this looks like quite interesting, quite fun. I'm very excited to try it and get it out. I don't know if to do a dedicated review on it, if that's something you wanna see, or maybe I can just show it being set up when I build uh, Drogo's tank, but I wanna have a quick look. So if we look at this, there is a cycle time and a working time, you can set all of that. So if you want it to come on during a certain time, you can, um, this is really helpful because I, if I'm honest, I do spray down the tanks more often than use a humidifier because then I have to plug it in and all my plugs are behind the tanks. It's a little bit annoying, but um, definitely going to be trying this. And obviously when you saw the tank, there was that bit where that nozzle can fit onto and go straight into the tank. Now you may be wondering, what do you use to build your backgrounds? And I have a whole playlist where I show you every like bioactive tank build I've done. And every time I use the touch and foam landscape. Now, I will say that I have found out that you can actually use any kind of expanding foam as long as you let it cure long enough. Um, but this is one I always go to just because I think it is safe for ponds, which is a bonus because you know, it shouldn't be toxic. Um, also it's black. Um, so I don't wanna go through and do this entire tank with white foam, put the dirt on the back and then some of that dirt inevitably gets um, knocked off and then all I can see the whole time is some white foam. So this is just my preference. I will say this has been incredibly difficult to get hold of and I probably paid more than I had to to get it. But I actually got two cans. I might be okay with a one, but I got two just in case. Now, when doing this background, if you've seen my builds before, you'll know that I carve down the foam, go over with sealant. So I use an aquarium safe sealant. You can get on Amazon. And then I put cocoa fiber on top. So I've got both of those as well, but just not with me right now. To make up the background and sort of branches, I have a whole basket of cork. So I basically went into a reptile shop. They were doing it like 10 pound per kilo. And so I picked the lightest bits of like flat cork because basically I want to cover the majority of the background in cork. Um, so I've got lots of flat bits, lots of branches. I actually got a bigger cork bit, which you'll see in the build where it's more of a hide and a ledge at the same time. It's kind of cool. Um, whilst going through this cork, I found a baby white's tree frog. Now I was still in the shop. I, I thought for a split second there was like a toy in there. It's like it's a tiny little toy. And then it breathed and I was like, oh. So I picked it up and took it to the guy and was like, I found a frog in your cork. Now, when I posted about this on Instagram and Twitter, a lot of you told me I should have kept that frog. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, honestly, just overcame me that day. So I, I did give the frog back to the shop. I did find it, I gave it back. Um, but yeah, you never know what you can find in cork. And when you do do this, whenever you get cork, soak it. I initially soaked it with cold water just in case there was something living in the cork and I didn't want to like boil it. Um, and then when anything comes off from that, then you can use boiling hot water. Some people put that in the oven, some people freeze it just in case there's bacteria or other stuff on it. Now for the drainage. So of course I am using the Havistar Amazon uh, sinking clay balls filtration. This is just like the clay balls. Use them in my leopard geckos tank. Thought it'd be good to use it in here, especially in our boreal tanks. You don't want them getting boggy. So a drainage layer is important. Uh, the bit I'm going to put between the drainage and the soil is going to be the lucky reptile drainage fleece. Uh, I've always used it. It always works well with me. And of course, for the substrate, I'm using Earth Mix. So with my leopard geckos, I use Earth Mix Arid. Uh, for my arboreal geckos, I use Earth Mix. Um, this has supported plant growth and custodians in the tanks for years. I looked it up and actually in May 2017 was when I actually set up Drogo's tank. So that's had the same Earth Mix in all this time and the plants are still going strong and definitely the cleanup crew is too. So I actually have two bags of these and two bags of those clay balls. 
But anyway, I hope this video has helped. I am super excited to build this tank. Arboreal tanks are actually one of my favorites to build. Um, I don't wanna leave loads of the back exposed. As I said, I'm gonna get a lot of these flat bits of cork and properly get on the back because the bit I hate the most is doing all the sealanting and dirt and stuff, so yeah um but also thank you to arcadia and habistat for sending me some of these products like they're gonna help so so much and um as i said i will leave links below if you want to check out any of these products as well but uh yeah thank you for watching guys if you haven't already please subscribe but thank you and goodbye <laughs>